the Mamiya RB67 Pro SD. Let's talk about it. What's going on everyone? It's Free Michael and we are back with another video. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. I'd ask that if you find any of this information valuable in any way, please consider hitting the subscribe and the like button. And for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for the continued support. It really does mean a lot to me. Thank you. So today, we're gonna be talking about the Mamiya RB67 Pro SD. That's a lot. But uh, <laughs> this is a camera that I've had for quite some time. I've done primarily studio portraiture, uh, but I've also taken it outside a few times. I want to give you my general thoughts and opinion and potentially a recommendation depending on how you evaluate the camera. But uh, I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So in 2016, I pretty much hit a creative block when it came to digital photography. Um, I was really looking for a way to reinvigorate my love for the hobby. So while doing some research, I came across a couple out of New York City who own a portrait studio called Paper Monday. I'm gonna drop their link in the description below. Check them out when you can. But I was really blown away with Paper Monday's ability to communicate stories uh, via film photography, so much that it inspired me to buy my RB67. And so shortly after purchasing this camera, I called a bunch of friends over, I had my three-point lighting system in place, and uh, my place was so small that I even had to create my own backdrop out of foam core that I spray painted myself because I just didn't have the room for a traditional backdrop. So um, at the time I was shooting with Portra 400 and I'm telling you the colors that I got out of this camera were absolutely amazing. I was really pleased with the results. Uh, not only that, the 90 millimeter lens gave me a nice sharpness that I really enjoyed. But I think overall, just the film aesthetic, right? A lot of times in digital photography, we're always looking for that film, I won't say always, but most people are looking for that film look uh, that they're trying to emulate. But if you have the time and you have the patience, I would strongly recommend that you go for the real thing. Uh, the great thing with the RB67 is you get these nice big 6x7 negatives that allows you to get really creative. So you're probably wondering how much does this camera weigh and I actually weighed it this morning and believe it or not with the 90 millimeter lens attached this camera weighs six pounds which is pretty heavy for a camera um, obviously it's very bulky but um, clearly this is something that's meant to be used in a you know a controlled environment practically used in like a studio environment as opposed to walking around outside however I have taken this downtown on a couple of occasions uh, fortunately for me I have a carrying bag but uh, even then if you plan on walking around for more than a couple of hours I would not recommend lugging this camera around unless you like working out and taking photos at the same time then this is the camera for you so when I purchased this camera in 2016, I actually got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, so for $380, I bought this on eBay. Uh, it came with two lenses, the 90 millimeter as well as the 127 millimeter. Unfortunately for me, I guess unbeknownst to me, the 127 millimeter was broken and uh, I never got it fixed. So this has pretty much been living on the body ever since I've had it. Um, it came with two rotating backs. This is the 6x7, uh, and then it also came with the 645, uh, which I've never actually attached onto this one. Uh, and then it also came with a waist level viewfinder, as well as a prism viewfinder, which is actually broken. So um, when it comes to lining up my shots, I pretty much have to rely on the waist level viewfinder. So patience is the name of the game when dealing with this waist level viewfinder. So in short, the waist level viewfinder reverses the image that you see in front of you. So whatever's on your left is gonna be on your right and whatever's on your right is gonna be on your left, which honestly makes it a pain when you're trying to compose your shots. 
Um, it looks cool, it looks aesthetically pleasing, but uh, I would not recommend the waist level viewfinder at all. Uh, in fact, if you're gonna go with the Mamiya RB67, I would strongly recommend that you purchase the Prism viewfinder, which actually has a mirror built in, so that when you're looking through the viewfinder, it's going to reverse your shot to the correct composition that you see in front of you. So uh, again, it looks cool, but it's not very fun to play with. So the great thing with this camera is depending on whether you wanna shoot landscape or portrait, it has a rotating back, which is the RB and RB67. So all you have to do is just rotate the back depending on your composition. And then of course, before you take your photo, you just wanna take the dark slide out and so basically this separates the film from light. Uh, so if this is in the camera, you are unable to expose the negative to light uh, to give you a photo. So this is something that has been a common pain for most film photographers as they're uh, you know, out there in the field. So compared to its contemporaries, the RV67 has what's called a bellows focusing system. So if you notice as you're focusing on your subject in front of you, uh, you'll notice the lens start to protrude from the camera body. And what's interesting about this is on the right side here, it has an exposure compensation chart. And so this tells you how much light you have to compensate for, depending on how far your subject is from the camera lens. And that's really a great reminder because especially when you're doing film photography, it's really important to slow down, slow your process down and really dial in the settings um, to get the images that you're looking to create. So in 2016, I purchased this camera for $380 and I'm sure that if I were to sell it today, I could get much more for it. But um, if you're comparing this camera today to its contemporaries like the Pentax or the Hasselblad, um, there's a good chance that you're gonna be able to get a better price on this than you would the other two. Not always the case, I'm sure there's some outliers, but generally speaking, I think this is a great entry-level camera, especially if you're looking to primarily do studio portraiture. So my honest view of the camera, I would say having this camera since 2016, um, it's a process. It's, it's if, if you're really invested in getting uh, into medium format and you are a patient person, um, I would say, hey, why not go for it, right? Especially if you plan on using it in a studio slash, you know, like a portrait setting, um, I would say go for it. Um, as I mentioned, if you're looking at entry-level cameras, I think this is the way to go as opposed to some of the other brands out there. Um, but, you know, there are some downsides to it. It's extremely heavy. Uh, it's not something that I would recommend that you carry around. Um, as far as maintenance goes, as I mentioned with the Bellows focusing system, it kind of has this accordion style focusing. Um, if there were to be any damage to this, like a hole, um, it's obviously going to impact your images because you're now letting light in. So just some other things that you have to upkeep with this camera, but as long as you can maintain it, I think it's a great start. Uh, but most importantly, if you can get a good deal on it, I would strongly recommend scouring Craigslist, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, whatever you can do. Um, I know people are always looking for ways to get cash, so um, believe it or not, I've thought about selling this on a few occasions. So I'm sure if you keep your eyes open, you can get a good deal, and I think it's worth the buy. You, you guys are still here, oh my God. Thank you guys so much for the support on the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I, uh, I was actually just looking and I'm at almost 100 subs and I've only been doing this for about a month. So your support truly means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much. Again, if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I actually do have a surprise coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, involving my RB67. So stick around for that. But again, my name is Free Michael. Peace.